Hi, I'm Dr. Janine Krippen, a volcanologist, and this is my guest. Yes, I'm Dr. Boris Behnke, uh, a former German who is now, since many, many years, actually decades, working in Sicily, southern Italy. I'm currently doing uh, an evening shift in our operations room where we do constant real-time surveillance of the volcanic areas in Sicily. Thank you for joining me. So this is our first time trying a longer format of one of these videos. And it's especially fascinating because this is, uh, Boris is going to explain to us how they're monitoring these volcanoes during the current lockdown with the coronavirus in Italy. So this is really to reassure everyone that we're still doing volcano monitoring around the world. Uh, we can do a lot of monitoring remotely and Boris is going to take us through the different monitoring techniques and what they can tell us about the volcanoes over there. Um, could you mind studying with what volcanoes you're monitoring at the moment? Yeah, we are here. This is actually the, the seat in Catania of our institute, which is a, a national institution like the United States Geological Survey. And we have many different seats in uh, different areas. Also, obviously, the volcanic areas of Italy. Here we are responsible for the Sicilian volcanic areas, which is obviously foremost Etna, which you can see here in the background, and uh, the only island volcanoes, which also includes Stromboli in the upper photograph here. So uh, two of these volcanoes are actually constantly erupting, and uh, they are also potentially dangerous, as all erupting volcanoes, obviously. So uh, this is why we have to keep an eye on them, even in times of lockdown, because we are... Uh, a government institution and so this is a service that we do for the, the community for the, the general public and we can obviously not stop doing this excellent thank you so much and um, there are so many people working so hard and you sent me a photo before you came in with the mask and the gloves as you're transitioning so they, you can see the the gear here that we have to put on when we get into the institute and we change shifts with the colleagues who are there before us and then also when we end the shift we have to do all this and we have to disinfect the whole room uh with this gear before we can take it off and then work more or less naturally and in a more relaxed manner wow thank you for sharing that yeah, it's quite eerie i bet i can only imagine um would you like to take us through the different monitoring techniques I will, absolutely. So, um, first thing that we do is we have constant seismic signals arriving, and we see a few of them here in the background. We see uh, seismic signals from the summit area of Etna and from the flanks of Etna. We also have southeastern Sicily down here, and then uh, the Aeolian Islands in this light blue color, the northeastern tip of Sicily. And Stromboli, where you can see quite a lot of signals, because Stromboli constantly produces these explosions, and these explosions produce these little signals here. Uh, and we see also very often similar signals at Etna, because we also have explosive activity there. Here the signal is a little bit less uh, enhanced, so we have to scale these signals. And this is the first approach that we have. We also also have a live video recording, which unfortunately in this moment is not very spectacular because the, just a couple of hours ago, the weather has deteriorated and until one hour ago, you would still see the summit of Etna, but we can build in maybe some, I'll send you some video from the cameras when there is good visibility, because that allows us to see what's going on. We also have thermal cameras, all these bluish, sometimes very psychedelic colors are thermal cameras so that we can see heat emission. And all these signals are, they run through automatic detection and alert systems. So that when something happens, the two of us who are doing the shift, we're always two of us. We have uh, Lino here in the background. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and actually a colleague who's also working a lot in our public outreach work, um, so that we get alerted when something happens, especially during the night when you easily fall asleep in here. Um, and then obviously when the weather conditions like that, the alert system that is linked to the uh, thermal anomalies, 
does not work because it doesn't see. So we also have other signals, like a very famous one is the volcanic tremor that we see here, uh, a ground vibration, which is caused by explosive activity, basically. And you can see that we have a slight uptick here in the last like 24 hours with some fluctuations. So when this increases dramatically, even when we do not have good visibility, we know something more serious is happening. And if we want to know what exactly that is, we also watch uh, acoustic signals that we see here. This is infrasound. These are very low frequency sounds. Low frequency means they're very, very deep and we cannot hear them, but we can record them with special microphones. And we see that actually it does producing very happily lots and lots and lots of little infrasound signals. We also know where they come from. This is a map of the summit area where we see the crater that is currently producing these signals. We know that there are cre three craters active, but one of them is currently producing most infrasound signals. So that's interesting because it seems that the other two craters which are erupting are producing signals at higher frequencies that we can hear actually. And we can also say where approximately the magma is in the volcano. We have the so-called source of the volcanic tremor. We see it is also in the same position actually as the, the infrasound signals, which is the so-called New Southeast Crater, the youngest of the currently four summit craters of Etna. And so this is what we do in real time when something happens, when we have an earthquake. Let me show you also the earthquake maps here. When we have an earthquake in our volcanic areas, then we have to notify authorities, civil defense. This is the last Sicilian earthquake, which is outside the volcanic areas here at uh, the town of Syracuse, a bit to the south of Syracuse, and we did not have to do anything also because it was a rather, rather ridiculous little magnitude 0.4. So we have to send information when we have earthquakes in the volcanic areas, which are those in the boxes here, and when they are more than magnitude 2.5. So that is, that's for earthquakes. We also get, obviously, international earthquakes. from the United States. And then we have to send messages also when there is volcanic activity. So when there is a thermal anomaly, we have a panel here which says Attivita. And when this records a hot explosion, we hear a siren. I will also send you, send you the sound bit of the siren. So we hear the siren and then we have to notify the authorities and civil defense. And if the situation uh, requires also alert air traffic because we all know volcanic ash in the atmosphere does not go very well with airplanes and so we have to uh, warn the authorities that handle air traffic in case of ash emission. So these are basically things that we do in here. We then also have a lot of other information that we can look up on the intranet. We can look at gas emission and ground deformation but that is rather more long-term uh, material, and what we do here is real-time. So we have to give information in real-time about things happening in real-time. Wow, that is so cool. Thank you so much. Um, so I know that with seismology, there is a lot of processing that goes into understanding the different signals and what they mean. Um, is there a lot of that kind of uh, technology built into that real-time data, and then seismologists go back later and work more with the data to understand what's going on? Yes, we do actually have a nice little software on this computer here, which is the so-called Sizen Picker, which allows us to play around with earthquakes and have a look at the last one. Problem is that currently we have very little seismic activity in the Etna area, which makes everybody happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I have to look for Let's see uh, the latest earthquake in the Etna area. That's a couple of days ago, actually. I think uh, on the eight, three days ago, we have three days without earthquakes at Etna. Uh, so that was the 18th, 1952. We actually do work all the time here in universal time, Greenwich Mean Time. which is the same time that is being used in similar 
institutions all uh, was well, the time I forgot going to cut so let me show you how you play around with the earthquakes 1952. So, 1952. There it is. Upload the file and see, there it is. See the little earthquake there? That's uh -huh. the seismogram. And what we can do is we plug around with these earthquakes to determine the magnitude and their localization. Uh, so that, that is something that we have to do in any case with every earthquake, setting, especially when they're beyond magnitude. I have to see within. And then reanalyze it and send a report within 30 minutes to the wow. authorities and civil defense. So this, this has to happen very, very fast. And you can imagine when we had the, this kind of storm of earthquakes in December 2018 when there was the last major eruption on the flank of Etna and we had like 800 earthquakes more than no, about 1,000 earthquakes on the first day on the second day I was and we still had hundreds of earthquakes and uh, for eight hours we did nothing else than localize earthquakes now we get actually a little bit of a view up uh, in the webcams we see that snow is falling on Etna it has been virtually snow-free until one hour ago. So uh, a late belated winter after having a winter that was not a winter at all here. Wow, that's it's amazing to see. So for everyone out there, every single one of these monitoring techniques has years, decades of science behind them to understand the physics behind every single earthquake type and every little bit of infrasound and thermal anomalies. There's so much technology. Uh, so many researchers have gone into every single one of these techniques, and now you have them all there just watching in real time with multiple volcanoes, and that's it's amazing. It's absolutely hauntingly amazing, I would say, <laughs> because uh, you must imagine we're approximately 110 people in here who work in this seat and maybe some 10 of them are volcanologists and some 20-ish, 30-ish are seismologists and then we have a, a dozen other geophysicists who are experts in ground deformation, magnetism, gravity, we've got the gas specialists, we've got the computer simulators um, and those who look at the chemistry of the rocks. But then we have the technologists and the technicians like my colleague here behind me. Uh, who works a lot with seismology and these people made all this possible. Because these computer specialists, networks specialists, we have people who are, are responsible for installation of development of instruments, construction of instruments, installation of instruments. Because every earth is being transmitted from the stations that record the satellite into this room around like five. So that is really, really, um, it's it's breathtaking what work is behind this. And so I always like to acknowledge the, the brains that have put a lot of efforts in here because without them, we would still be taking photographs and reflecting how and what, what's happening. <laughs> We've made a lot of progress here. This is some of the most sophisticated and modern volcano surveillance systems that we have on this planet. That's that's just so incredible. And it's, you know, it, it speaks to the international effort that goes into volcano monitoring. We have conferences and workshops where we all learn from each other around the world. And we exactly. learn the latest techniques in volcano monitoring or understanding every single tiny bit, even the smallest crystals of volcanoes so that we can warn people and help people get out of the way when volcanoes start to do something that is putting people at risk. So thank you so much for taking us through this. Um, Great pleasure. Us... Thank you for, for coming in here. My pleasure. I've been there in person. It's good to be there virtually again. <laughs> and good luck, everybody. Really, really heartfelt. Good luck, everybody. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Boris. The thing that we're maybe most concerned about is that we do not get anything like a uh, dangerous volcanic eruption or a massive earthquake. We really, really cross our fingers that this will not happen in this situation. Absolutely. And there are people monitoring earthquakes and volcanoes around the world to make sure that people get warning if anything happens. Or with earthquakes, you don't get warning, but there are a lot of things really hard right now around the world through these really difficult conditions to make sure that people are informed and as safe as can be. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to chat with me about this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.